Tonight, I'll be wrapping up the series of teachings that we started about four weeks ago. In our Wednesday services, we have been looking at living consistently in the joy of the Lord. Living consistently in the joy of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, living consistently in the joy of the Lord. Make it a loud, say it consciously. Living consistently in the joy of the Lord. Listen to me. If you are able to get the, the details of this message, you will never have a downtime once in your life. The devil will be completely frustrated about your life in the name of Jesus. And that shall be your portion. Although the month of August is rounding up, your joy is just beginning. Amen. I thought I heard someone's loud amen. amen. All through the remaining days of your life, you will continue to live perpetually in joy. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. And tonight, I will take my anchor scripture from Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 says, Therefore, with joy, shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Therefore, with joy, shall ye draw waters, water out of the wells of salvation. So, if you are not joyful and you are at that well, you are stopped from drawing anything. If you are at the wells of salvation and there is no joy in your heart, listen, joy is a matter of the heart. It's a spiritual thing. It's nothing in the physical. Do you wonder why all the, the, the popular, major, prosper, or rich people in the world look for joy? They cannot find it. It is not found in the land of the living. It is not found on the surface. It is not found in anything else. The best a wealthy person can get is what is called happiness. Happiness is a surface thing. Happiness is a makeup. Happiness is just try, just try to be happy, be excited. And that's why they look for it in drugs, it's not there. They look for it in alcohol. It's not in alcohol. They look for it in things mundane. Joy is not in anything mundane. It's not in anything carnal. Where is the source of joy? We have said it over and over. It's a thing of the spirit. Tonight, we're going to take it a little further. And you're going to understand how do I get joy how do I maintain it? And how do I activate the virtue of joy every day in my life? Praise the Lord. So in the course of this month, we have reviewed several aspects of living a joyous life during our midweek services and how to maintain an attitude of gratitude during our Sunday services. So in summary, what we have looked at this month we have talked about how do I have a heart that says thank you to the Lord and say thank you to man always. A, we, we understand two Sundays ago that one of the attributes of the end time is that people are thankless. People are ungrateful and it's going to multiply. So how do we have a heart that says thank you to the Lord because out of that heart also proceeds the virtue that is called joy. And it helps you to live well before God and before man. Now let's take a little look at that scripture, anchor scripture. Now from Isaiah 12, 3, we realize that your access and my access to virtues from the wells of salvation is joy. 
In other words, if you are at the well, how many of us have been at local wells before where you, you need to dip a rope in and dip a rope in and begin to pull water out? Many of us, praise God, particularly most of us from Africa will have experienced that. Now, if you are at a well, the well has water. There is so much water in the well. But if you don't have a rope and a bucket to throw into the well to bring out water, it is impossible to get it. Now, do you realize that that rope and that bucket is joy that you throw into the wells and bring up stuff. So joy is important for anyone who will draw virtues from the wells of salvation. Now I look at the word salvation. So we understand what wells are. Wells are like fountains that continuously oozes out blessings, oozes out water. Now Salvation there is the Hebrew word called Yeshua. Say with me, Yeshua. Yeshua. Which means something saved. Which means deliverance, aid, that is help, victory, prosperity, health, and welfare. So salvation is a multi-faceted uh, word that deals with your welfare, that deals with your health, that deals with prosperity, that deals with aid, that deals with anything in life that is good that you are looking for. Salvation is not just the salvation of your soul. It's your deliverance from sickness, from the hand of the devil, from any oppression. Now imagine a life that is so, so oppressed. I have seen it before. When I was a little boy, I, the church we used to go to then, I don't want to talk about it, but then just it was a church. It was just a canal church. And there were two girls. It was the first time in my life that I would see oppression live. These two girls, at any time of the day that the devil wanted to deal with them, there was something he did and tortured and tortured and tortured them. And the next thing is screams, shout, and you know, they're calling for help. And it's like, oh no, what has bewitched these girls? That's oppression. In the day, in the night, they can't sleep, they can't rest. That's oppression. And if there's anyone here, that is that oppressed. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Yes. In the name of Jesus. But please understand. The access to a life that is free. To a life that is pleasurable. To a life that is prosperous. To a life that is making progress. Is joy. So you need the virtue of joy. To pull out things from the wells of salvation. You need the attribute of joy. Tell your neighbor you need the attribute of joy. You need that attribute of joy to pull your prosperity, to pull your health, to pull pro, uh, glorious and beautiful things that God has prepared for you. And I see you accessing them tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Just like we read from Proverbs 17, 22, the Bible says, a merry heart do it good like medicine but a broken spirit dry the bone if you notice that your body is being oppressed continually by the devil check your spirit it's coming from your spirit there is something in your spirit that is broken that needs to be fixed and tonight the holy ghost through his oppression will fix any brokenness in the spirit of anyone your health depends on the prosperity of your soul. According to 3 John chapter 2. Beloved, I wish above all things. That thou mayest prosper. And be in health. Even as thy soul prospers. When your soul is joyful. The Bible says it's like medicine. You need no drugs. When your soul prospers. You can never be a problem in any society or in any gathering. Check out the people who have problems in society, in the neighborhood, and everywhere. There is a problem in their soul. Their soul is sick. Their soul, the soul controls the emotion. 
is where the mind sits, where your thinking ability sits. So if the soul is sick, you can't think well. If the soul is sick, there is trouble. You, 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 every day you wake up is trouble. You think of trouble, this and that. And nobody wants to live like that. Tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus, there is deliverance for someone. Amen. Upon this mountain tonight, I decree total liberty for you. Amen. I didn't hear someone say amen. amen. Upon this mountain tonight, I decree freedom for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Now, how do you live consistently in joy? How do you live consistently in joy? Number one, connect to Zion. Say with me, connect to Zion. Connect to Zion. Psalm 48 verse 2 says, Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is what? Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. This is Mount Zion. So what God says is, the source of joy of the earth is here. Say with me, this is the headquarter of joy. One thing every member of every church should target every time is never to leave any service the same way that you came in. And I have an assurance tonight that someone is living here, a changed person, a different person, an enhanced person, a blessed person by the time they are leaving this place. If you are the one, let me hear your loud amen. It says Mount Zion is where the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, the sites of the north, the city of the great king. So every time you come to Zion, there is a virtue that must live with you. It's the virtue of joy. Why? Because the world, the world depends on you for joy. Your office you are the agent of joy in that office. In your neighborhood, you are the agent of joy. So if you don't have that joy, how can you distribute the joy? So that's why every time you come to Zion, there is a whole transaction that is set up to release the virtue of joy to you. And so don't you ever miss out of it every time you are in Zion. Don't you ever miss out. Every time you come to Zion, hear the word. And it comes via the word. It comes via worship. It comes via fellowship. What did Jesus say in Matthew? He said, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm in the midst of them. So can Jesus be in a place and there is sadness? Can Jesus be in a place and there is oppression? Can Jesus be in a place and there is scarceness? So every time you come to Zion, optimize, maximize, download as much as you can the joy that is within the house. I see someone living here with the virtue of joy in the name of Jesus Christ. And why is that so? Like I said in the pre-service prayer, Zion is God's distribution super center. How many of us have heard of Walmart super center? Now, from my reading and understanding of what they were trying to do in Walmart, is that anytime you go into Walmart from food, to car accessories, to everything that you might need for daily living, you should be able to find it in that super center. You find fruits, you find all kinds of things so that you, you don't need to go anywhere else. It's a one-stop center. You just go to Walmart, you buy your groceries, you buy car accessories, you buy everything that you need for life. God operates the same concept with the church. 
Say with me, God operates. God operates. The same concept the same. with the church. This is God's super center distribution center. This is God's super center where your blessings are being dispersed. Where you also are being dispersed pass to the wall as a blessing. He said to Abraham, I will bless you and I will make you what? A blessing. Say with me, I am a blessing. So not only are you blessed in Zion, God has set you up to be a blessing to the world. That's who you are. Say to your neighbor, you are a blessing to this generation. If that neighbor didn't say it well, tell another neighbor you are a blessing to this generation. Now why? Because in God's super center, there is the word of God that goes from the altar against every wickedness of the devil. Right now as I'm speaking, every oppression of the devil around your life right now is cut off. Every yoke around your neck is broken. Yeah. Every bondage, katan zotea, a proti galado, ito si zatia, a le pariataga, antrobia, iketezuza, latosia. Every bondage that has held you captive via the world coming your way right now, let's go of you. In the name of Jesus. So every time you come to Zion, God ensures that the word goes powerfully. Didn't you see from Ephesians chapter 6? It says, I'm being equipped with the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. A man that holds a two-edged sword, can any devil challenge him? If I hold a two-edged sword and I walk in the midst of this place, half of you will run away. Except that you know me. That I won't use it against you. If I turn it around and somebody comes through that way, that door now, with a two-edged sword in, hand, in his hand, and stands like this, half of the people will be looking at pastor. What's pastor saying? Should we go that way? Or should we open the back door? <laughs> or should we go upstairs? <laughs> Why? Because you are holding a powerful weapon. Listen to me. Every time you come to Zion, God equips you Amen. with this powerful weapon. So the word you are hearing right now is that sword of the spirit which will pierce through every wickedness out there. So you are prepped up to be a blessing to the world out there. When they are in confusion, as a child of God, you should walk in there and say, what's going on? Can I help you out? Hallelujah. When there is trouble anywhere, you are supposed to get there as a son of peace. Because the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called what? The sons of God. Where are they equipped from? Zion. That's why you cannot afford not to be in church. The last other time I told you, every time you miss church, you lose money. Because it is the word you are hearing now. Somebody is hearing an instruction now that they need to go out and walk with and things begin to work. That's what we do in Zion. We have prophetic covering over us. I stand here as a prophet of God and I declare over you, you're going out and you're coming in is blessed. Any devil that attempts you falls down at your feet. It sticks. There are angels released all around us. Hebrews chapter 12 tells us, it said, but ye are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels. Do you think the angels are just coming here to waste their time? No. They are coming here for you. To equip you. To check you up. To look at your hand, your eyes, your feet. Everything around your life. To take your prayers. So never you miss out of Zion. Please beg your neighbor don't miss church. 
I'm not saying it to lure you to church. I'm telling you reality. I have lived like this for 50 years. And I know the value of being in church. I've been a church boy all my life. Those of you who were there on Sunday, you heard the testimony. This brother, uh, he did this. He was the one who encouraged me in this. He was the one who, if I'm not in church, will I be an encouragement to anyone? So your center of distribution is Zion. Always be present. Why? Because every time you come to Zion, something lives with you. Every time you come to Zion, every deficiency in you is loosed. So come to Zion with your heart. Come to Zion with your life. Come to be equipped. Come to be loaded. Come to be set up to be dispersed there to the world as a blessing. This is where the center of joy is. If there's anyone in Zion who is not joyful, tonight I decree a release of the virtue of joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. What else do we have? In Zion is a place for corporate and individual prayer, for friendship. Listen to me, there are true friends in Zion. And if you show me your friend, I will tell you your future. If you show me who your friend in Zion is, I will tell you where you will end. There are people that you come with in Zion, they are, they are going nowhere and they are leading you nowhere. But there are people in Zion whose heart is ready and they are ready to receive from God. And the moment the word is landing, it's landing on the good ground of their heart. Make friends with such. Look for people who are going somewhere in Zion and follow through with them. There's good friendship in Zion. I have good friends. You saw some of them on Sunday. I've been friends with some of those people for over 30 years. And we still maintain our wonderful fellowship. Where did it start from? Zion. The church. Praise God. I see God release great grace on you this day. In the name of Jesus. That's how to live in joy. Somebody tells me I don't know sadness and so you just came out from church and the spirit of depression is holding you. You didn't go to church. You didn't connect. You didn't connect. So if you don't have a connection you can't collect from heaven. It's your connectivity. Look, you can line up pipes. If I have pipes all lined up around water and I refuse to connect anyone to water, it will never carry water. You may hang around church. If you are not connected to the Holy Spirit, you cannot carry the virtue of joy. It's in Zion. The virtue of joy is where? In Zion. It's here. This is the happening center. This is God's super center. Tell your neighbor, this is God's super center. Praise God. So connect to Zion and collect from Zion. And I see God's grace abound unto you in the name of Jesus. Number three way to live consistently in the joy of the Lord is to count it all joy. Say to your neighbor, count it all joy. James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4. Say, my brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptation. Verse 3. Knowing this. That the trying of your faith. Works patience. And in verse 4. It says. But let patience have a perfect work. That ye may be perfect and entire. Wanting nothing. Count it all joy. In other words. In every situation that you face. Think of joy first. Rejoice in the Lord. Say Thank you, Jesus, because I'm counted worthy to go through this for you. All those, Romans 14, 18, those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall do what? Suffer persecution. If you don't want to be persecuted, then I am asking, are you, are you sure you are living for God? So count it all joy. What it means is expose yourself to joy. Never you see evil in anything happening. Why? Romans 8 28 says clearly to you and I, he said, For all things we know that all things, underline the word, all things, good or bad, all things, whether it looks good, whether it looks bad, all things work it together for good. All things. That you lost your job is working together for good because you are more than qualified for that job you are doing. 
that your car was dented. You were going out in the morning and somebody ran into you and crashed your car. There was, a, there was a, something worse that could have happened. And that was only the sign that God allowed you to see. What you saw is what you know. What you didn't see, you don't know. What could have happened could have been worse. But God allowed you to see that. So count it joy. Because it is not made to work against you. Tell your neighbor, nothing is made to work against you. Tell another neighbor. Nothing is made to work against you. For all things work it together for good. For good. Everything is working in my favor. Nothing has ever worked against me. If I look back and I recount, nothing has ever worked against me. Everything is working together for my good. So, when you face situation that you don't understand, switch to joy. Oh, Father, I thank you because this is not made to work against me. It is working in my favor. Maintain that attitude of joy. And before you know it, before long, it will crash before your eyes like a pack of cards. I decree every contrary situation that is staring at you right now begins to crash in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the Lord God will bruise Satan shortly under your feet. So watch it. That thing will crash under your feet shortly in the name of Jesus. Number four way to live consistently in joy is to ignore facts. Say it out loud with me. Ignore what? Ignore what? Facts. Facts. F-A-C-T-S. Ignore facts. The prison imprisonment of many people is in the fact before them. Oh, the president of the company just said, 500 people will be laid off. That is fact, but it's not reality. Because you can exempt yourself. That is fact. It may be a fact that men and women are going to be laid off. But the reality is, you can claim your exemption as you stand by God in the world. The imprisonment of many is in their mindset. Their mind is set. I've seen people before that I've prayed for. Pastor, please pray with me. What's going on? Pastor, I'm under a curse. I said, no, you are not under a curse. Reverse it. He said, no, Pastor, I'm under a curse. He's insisting because the mind is set. So it's a mindset. It's a fact that that may be happening. But you see, you can change facts, katasia, brodiato, by the word of God and turn it around against the devil. It was a fact that the devil organized the death of Jesus. But the reality is that the death of Jesus is the victory of believers. It was a fact that the wind was boisterous. And Peter ignored the fact. No one in his world has ever walked on water. None. Peter ignored fact. He said, Master, if it is you, bid me come. It was a fact that nobody had ever walked on water. But the reality is, at the word of the Lord, when he said, come, he came out. And when you are step out, when you step out of the boat, you walk with Jesus. When you stay in the boat, you stay in the storm. So he walked out on the storm and walked on water. Why? At the word of the Lord. He ignored the fact. Listen, you need to learn to ignore the fact. The doctor will tell you, as a matter of reality, you have only 15 more days to live. It may be a fact, but it's not a reality. What is real is the word of the Lord. It may be a fact, but it's not the truth. What is the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When you come face to face with fact, tell the fact, well, I can see you, but I ignore you, and I stand on the truth of the word of God. And what does the word say about you? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
So learn to ignore facts. Learn to remove your mind. Your mind is carnal. The soul is carnal. Depending on how you treat it. The mind, that's why the Bible says, renew your mind by the word of God. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. I beseech you, I'm begging you, brethren, by the message of God, that you renew your mind. Learn to ignore facts. Those who stay with facts end up as failures. And those who trade, who trade with the truth end up as success. You want to be a man of joy? Ignore facts and stand on the truth. The truth of the word of God which says the joy of the Lord is my strength. He said the fig tree may not blossom. There they, they may be no olive on the tree. Are, and things may not go. He said but I what? I will rejoice. In other words, I choose to rejoice. Facts you can't cancel from the world. You can't stop the doctors from doing their work. Until Jesus comes, they will continue to do their work. They will continue to prophesy doom. The doctor will tell you, as a matter of fact, it was this thing that killed Mr. X. It killed Mr. Y. In fact, it killed your father. It killed your great-grandfather. And it might kill you. That may be fact, but tell them that's not the truth. Ignore fact. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, it says, lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Get out of facts. Stop looking for facts. I see many people. I can't, I can't understand. I can't tell the last time I ever sat at TV to look at and watch news. Those news are facts, but they are not the truth. Oh, storm has destroyed 100,000 houses in Houston. Facts, but that's not the truth. Oh, uh, there is an epidemic that is affecting this. And that, what are you looking for in facts? What do you want to do with them? You have not finished understanding this truth. And you are sitting with TV. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, and you are sitting with TV getting facts. When you should be sitting with the word of God getting the truth. Tonight, every misalignment in your priorities, I decree via tonight's service, there shall be a correction. Amen. You'll begin to feed on facts Amen. and feed on the word Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It was the truth that Peter traded with that made him step out of the boat on water. And as soon as the water saw that this guy, I, he cannot fail. Because in his mindset, he was locked up that I cannot drown. Because the master is ahead of me. The water said, no, I must hold his feet. So that situation that is like a fact that you are looking at, ignore it. Go for the truth. The truth is no sickness is permitted to kill you. No oppression of the devil is supposed to survive beyond the moment. So when you find it surviving, go for the truth, expose yourself to the truth of the word, feed on the truth, let this be your source of truth and be your source of joy. And when you live like that, the devil says, I have no business with this guy. I let him go. You are from tonight, I see you living. Let's rise up together.